Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I didn't want to miss letting everyone know about an article that the Nikkei, uh, the Nikkei is like the Wall Street Journal here, uh, did a special interview with the Ripple board member and CEO of SBI, Mr. Yoshitaka Kitao. And it was a special anniversary series the 25th anniversary for them that was published on the 29th of January. Mr. Kitao was asked what will happen to banking in 25 years. He said it's all about technology. Technology is everything, especially when it comes to enhancing the customer convenience. And in addition, many banks will no longer be needed. So these clusters of city banks and regional banks will disappear. And he believes banks will also be broken down into individual functions such as remittances and settlement, he cites. So at present, SBI is bringing the fintech know-how to regional banks. If you have watched this channel, you know that he's in the middle of creating a fourth mega bank. He's making capital investments in banks throughout the country. Uh, he's choosing these um, areas which are geographically still have pretty good sized populations uh, outside of Tokyo. And he's going to bring the services related to digital assets using the virtual currency and blockchain, specifically di the uh, distributed ledger technology. So it can significantly reduce costs. And you know that SBI is invested in Ripple and it uh, really thinks that the crypto asset XRP along with this DLT is going to be the basis of success. So are digital currencies in the world a hegemony, meaning a dominant leader? Well, no doubt he thinks cash will be replaced by digital ones, but it is unlikely that the state will give up physical sovereignty. That is really important. So multiple digital currencies, including those backed by fiat, will coexist, he thinks. But still, there is a difference of individual countries' finance, the difference in the political systems, and the lack of basically a unified or, you know, uh, uh, monetary policy that is the same across the board. So he thinks that these debates will continue well beyond 25 years. Okay, I'm going to take you to an article that is really interesting. It is about the podcast that occurred with Mr. Naveen Gupta of Ripple. Uh, he was asked a whole lot about XRP and he made this quote, which I think is very good. Because digital currency will be sovereign in nature, its primary use case could be domestic and it will still need a bridge when it goes to Thailand, when it goes to Laos, and when it goes to Cambodia. So I tweeted that out today. And I got back a very interesting reply. Somebody said that they had found on Twitter from someone else that Mike Baldwin of Westpac, a Ripple customer, well, they did test Ripple a long time ago, like 2015, 2016. But I think they went really leaning towards um, IBM. However, uh, it is uh, a statement that he made that... Um, he asked, how is it that a central bank backed currency could eliminate the huge Nostro requirements that he states? And so this is something that Mike Baldwin said when he was with uh, Westpac, which by the way, he left that bank uh, April 2017. So he is asking me, you know, what do I make of this that when he commented that XRP will never be used? Well, that was 2017. This is 2020. And I really want to point out that there was a very important study done about the central bank digital currencies by the Bank of England, Bank of Canada, and Singapore. And in that study, they found that correspondent banks will need to ensure adequate funding of the central bank digital currency accounts to be able to honor payment obligations. So trapped liquidity will remain a significant issue and credit risk remain despite 
using these central bank digital currencies. And in addition, the liability framework for a participating central bank to hold another central bank's central bank digital currency on their balance sheet intraday and potentially overnight uh, would would have to be established. So it's very complex. It's not that easy. And just digitizing a fiat is not what XRP provides. So that's why it's very, I think, often confused that the central bank digital currencies are going to replace the need for XRP. So significant exchange risk and every bank would need to hold many CBDCs in many currencies. So you understand that is what XRP is eliminating. Okay. Um, I found something kind of interesting. I was just poking around on the SBI remit site and I found that on the January of 14th, they made an announcement of a big campaign that there is significant increase in remittance to Thailand. And the remittance uh, is going to go to almost all banks possible. So this is, this is new. And this is, I, I have been chasing this corridor for, it seems like two years because I just know we're on the verge of seeing Japan go live with on demand liquidity with Thailand. And I'm just, just can't wait for it to finally be announced. You know, SBI was one of the first, uh, it was the first to do the distributed ledger technology w in Asia with the Bank of Thailand, the Siam Commercial Bank. And so I think now that they have BitCub as their official exchange, I mean, all the stars are aligned. So we've got the exchange, which will be uh, the Ripple. It's officially the Ripple partner and they will provide that service. And on that slide, you saw seven banks uh, highlighted in the presentation that came out in January by BitCub. Uh, those seven banks are in Thailand. So I think that this announcement on January 14th is just one more proof that uh, they are just about to announce a live corridor. Okay. Um, I will tell you that if you follow Bank XRP, he has, um, let me just see here. He has, uh, up on his, um, Twitter site, the entire presentation for the third quarter fiscal year ending March, uh, 2020 for SBI and it's in English. So if you, that is interesting to you, that's where you can easily find it. I listened to it twice, actually. It's good. You know, you can see the real Mr. Kitao here in a couple of, couple of times he is getting very um vocal and he's not afraid to tell people when something angers him you'll you'll find that you can listen to it there's a couple of times where he cites uh when he's disappointed and and um and downright angry you know with with people that he's working with he's strong he is he is he is tough. And he said in the world of internet, winner takes all. So that gives you an idea of, of what he is or how he is thinking. And he also believes that the central banks, yeah, they're starting to take action in this digital currency. This is going to be the trend. And he says that, um, yeah, Japan needs to take, take action as well so that they are not left behind. Anyway, there is so much to unpack in that presentation that the purpose of this um, video is not for that. All right. I do want to talk about something that's kind of exciting because this is Nomura. Nomura is the financial mega powerhouse in Japan for the financial world. And they have launched a crypto asset index uh, that it serves as a benchmark for investing in cryptocurrencies. This is very, very important for the ecosystem to grow. The crypto assets, as they are officially called here in Japan now, 
It, it has uh, the information put into a database. It's a service, a database service called an IDS for specifically institutional investors in Japan and overseas. So this benchmark, uh, XRP was chosen. It's one of only five and it will contribute and provide evaluation criteria and it's just one more step to getting uh, this space healthy and it will be calculated daily at 3 p.m japan time and i think that uh, it just goes to prove that the digital asset asset xrp is in that status of being uh an asset just one of five so far that are being evaluated for the institutional investors. All right, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to jump to the fluff. Well, coins, not a problem for Japan's new ca cashless gashapon capsule toy vending machine. I don't know if you know about these, but they are all over the country. They're fun. And in these capsules, when you um, I have not seen the cashless one yet. I'm so surprised it, it is going to go cashless. It'll go cashless by utilizing a QR code and you can scan that with your phone for payment. Um, these capsules are so wacky, fun, and very often uh, quite Japanese. They sometimes will be just a few of these machines in front of a store. And then sometimes you'll go into a store that is just completely dedicated to, uh, many of these, like hundreds sometimes. So this is what a store with those gashapons would look like. And, uh, it's really, really fun. I'm telling you, it gets a little addictive. So this is one that, uh, yeah, I have to admit, I am, I am a lover of these. This is one, uh, and I found actually someone has uploaded a video on YouTube about it. Uh, it's called a hole in one. And this is a play on words too, because as you can see, this is a sushi roll, a maki. And here's the piece of tuna here. And here's a Shiba dog in the middle of the hole. One, which is hole in one. Okay. But one is actually the, the sound that the dogs make in Japan, they go one, one, you know, in us, we say rough, rough, or, you know, every country has its own on onomatopoeia, which is the sound word for what something sounds like. Well, dogs in Japan say one, one, and, uh, dogs are very often called one chan. Chan is just a, um, an affectionate, cute term put on the end instead of san. So, uh, san is very formal and official and chan is more, more like for, uh, friends. Okay. So this is hole in one. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. And, and this is one of my favorites. It's, it's fairly new. It's only been out for about a month. And then you can see here, I'm going to show you one more. Uh, when it comes to cats, oh, there's lots of gosh upon for cats. This is, the Egyptian Sphinx. Yeah. And this is detachable. So, uh, this also caught my eye and I got the calico cat that sits with the Sphinx head on top. <laughs> it's wacky, right? It's wacky, but you know, you just sometimes find something that, that talks to you and you just have to buy it. They only cost, well, it's a, there's a big range. Uh, they used to be just about, a dollar, hyakuen, uh, a buck when I first got here. And now they're um, pretty much all starting at $3 and gosh, they're getting expensive. Sometimes they are now $5. So, but you know, just the cuteness and the wackiness and the craziness of them uh, just becomes a little addictive. And also there is um, a gashapon that will give you one for free it has a camera mounted in it and if you smile it detects a smile and then makes a uh a dis it dispenses one of those capsules so that's kind of cute especially for kids who pose in front of the camera all right everybody yeah do take care sayonara for now bye bye